Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft PowerPoint. In this module, I want to have a look at how to create a flip book, a book that automatically turns pages so you can read it as it presents. So first of all, what I need to do is create the front cover and then the inter internal covers and then the back cover. So first of all, let's get rid of this. So I'm going to lay out, give myself a little blank slide. I've got the grid lines marked on, so view, ticked ruler on, grid lines and guides, they're all on. And then it's a case of inserting the front cover. And I'm going to do that by just drawing a rectangle using the shapes feature. Just drawing a rectangle, the whole size of one half of the slide. So that is going to be my rectangle. Now what I've got to do is create some binders to put down this side so it looks like it's the front cover of a book and then a a page title um, but let's have a look at doing the binders first so what I'm going to do is use a little arc tool so draw myself a little arc like so and then I'm just going to right click on that and format shape just because it brings the format shape pane on and then I want to change the weight of this line to a, a bigger line or fatter line so I'm just gonna make this a little bit fatter and then if I click on the line itself what I want to do is make it slightly curved so now that's probably a little bit too big but let's see what I can do with this if I can bring it in a little bit and then just bring that down like that so it's just going to simulate a ring binder. You might have to faff about with this like I'm doing. There you go, that looks okay. And then I want to put a little gradient on this. So, so on the line it's a gradient fill. The first bit's white. The second bit is black. And the last bit can be black as well. Let's have a see what that looks like and then white at the end so if I click away from that so you've got like a slight white bit now what I need to do is do a re another rectangle for the cutout part that goes on this bit so again back to insert shape rectangle um, just want a small rectangle which is going to simulate the cutout portion of this and then that wants to sit in like that down a bit pull this down and then this needs to go to be a slightly different color and it needs to go to the back so shape format send to the back so the line comes into it and then I want to do a lighter color than that so if I just pick a lighter blue like so that'll do and then what I want to do is just group these two so I'll hold my shift key down control D control D control D control D control D so you basically need to do as many as these as will get you because I'm going to position these on to the edge of the paper like so and let's just do one at the top of each section so I'll do it at the center of each section like so send that to back so that's the first page now I'll drop that down get a second page I can probably copy this and paste it on this page and then I do want to make another copy like so so I think I won't group all this actually sit on that ungroup that and then click on this bit bring that forward that's it so that's what I want so now if I hold shift key down on those three and group those three 
that's what I want. So all of this, all of this other stuff, I can get rid of. I don't need it. And then what I'm going to do is just copy that one down. Control D, 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 D. And then I don't know if I've done enough. Oops, got the wrong bit. Let's get this one. Sit that in the middle. And then just position these, evenly space these up, like so. Aiming them in the middle. There are, there are guides here that I'm not even, I'm paying no attention to, these little red arrows that appear in. But um, I've probably done too many. I, I've put these too close, should I say. But it's, um, there's no quick... Once you've done this and, and got this working, you can obviously then save it as a template and use this over and over and over again. I'm sure you can see what's happening here. Just do one more to fit in there. Okay, so now we should hold our shift key down and group all these little objects if you can. So once you've got them all together you can group group them and then you've got that as a group. Now what we need to do is put a piece of paper on here that sits either side of this. Now if I draw a rectangle it doesn't want to be the same size exactly as the page but not, not far off so if I just draw that and colour that white, shape fill white, and then I want to send that to the back. So it sits like that, so it looks like there's holes there, so the page needs to come across a little bit. So it sits like that, happy with that. And then you do the same on the other side. Do you draw a rectangle that's going to represent the page and then colour it white, make sure it's the same size, which is what I was just talking about in real life that I don't do. You're making this page white and that needs to come over a bit so it sits like so and then we need to make that go to the back, centre back. And then we need to send this to the back again. So that happens like so. So it looks like that's the big, uh, ring binder. Now to get the page to turn, we need to do transition. So if I go to transition and select the one I need, which is page curl, and apply to all pages. If I put that into full screen for a second, let's see what happens here. So yeah, you can see that just flicking over. Now, we're going to have to sort this first page out because these need to come back under a bit. Uh, I've got them grouped, so I'll have to ungroup them. So let's put some information on this page so we've got something to look at. So if I insert a blank graph, for example, I can just put that on there so it sits on one page. Just get rid of this stuff. Just put it up there, out of the way. If I can get out of the thing, make it black. And then on this page, I'll insert something else. I'll just insert a, a smart art diagram cycle. Uh, that'll do. And then just make that small so it goes onto the page. If I can get the thing. So that's what the information is on that page. And now we want a duplicate page, which I should have done before. Control D. Got exactly the same on the next page. And this time I'll delete that chart. And I'll delete this and just put something else there. So on this page, I can put maybe a table. Just draw a table. Make it fit on that page. So there's a little table. And on this, I'll just insert a picture from stock images. Um, that one. So it's going to download that. And it's be, no doubt it'll be a massive picture, which I'll have to resize. There it is. So I'll just 
make that quite small so it'll fit on this page and then the last thing we need to do is duplicate that slide and just bring that down to be a back cover so this is all the wrong way around now so what I need to do with this one is just flip this over and move it into the right position so I flipped it so I need to just position it so it's in the right position like so I mean I probably should make the arches a bit tighter but that for this it'll do and I think I'll do that with the same on this one then I don't have to redo it all now I might have knocked them out of alignment with that but let's have a, a quick look um, if I put this into in fact, let's try slideshow from current slide from beginning. Let's play that. So there's the book turning over and it's turning over again. It comes to the back page. Okay, so we know it's working. So now we have to put a text box on the front cover. So I'm just going to do something like that. Call it my flip book book my flip book and just make the font of that a lot bigger than it is so just make it huge center it and then on the back cover you just want another text box um, insert with some something wise and wonderful wise words that's because i don't know any wise words but i'm sure most people watching this would know wise words uh -huh. so the big thing to get right i think is this this little bit the binder and because i've then done this the binder is, is, is slightly different than the front one but um I was more careful on these center pages and I think there's probably too many binder rings there it's up to you but th the process is what I'm trying to show you of how to do it and it's all to do with the transition which is page curl and that's the start of your book and then that will just turn over the relevant pages as you go through it and obviously like I've just said this needs to be the same uh, in terms of numbers as these but that's all I want to talk about in this particular video, so hopefully you found that useful. Thank you for your time and see you on the next one.